Good morning, good morning, good morning. We have something special to show you. So we've actually been doing quite a bit of work um, and not been able to film. We've just started homeschooling the, the homeschooling year. Well, we're a couple weeks in now, but, um, and Kendall hasn't been able to get out here and film what we're doing and we kind of just needed to push forward. And so we figured some stuff out. We're probably gonna do it different, but let me show you what we did to get our second story formed for the shop. Check it out. So first off, you'll notice we now have scaffolding. Scaffolding equals safety. And now we don't have to be responsible or careful anymore because we have scaffolding. Um, don't tell your wife. <laughs> or your so, mother. So um, in order, this wall, which is the north wall of the workshop, um, we did not do the little cutout for the flat roof because this wall is actually going to 18 feet. The shop is gonna be two stories tall. So uh, what we did is we built up to 11 and a half feet. This was the wall of perseverance that just everything went wrong with, but we built up to 11 and a half feet. And then where the second story will be, which is right here, this beam, we actually drilled holes. And on the inside side, because this will end up being a permanent beam, not this beam, but we will get another beam just like it um, to be a permanent fixture. What we did is we drilled holes and then we took some 5 8 threaded rod and we epoxied in, leaving uh, seven and a half inches sticking out of the wall, seven inches sticking out of the wall because this is a six inch beam. Um, and we just threaded on a nut and washer to hold the beam securely tight against the wall. Then we went ahead and put our started our forms on top of that beam to get us the rest of the way up. Um, I don't think we're gonna end up doing it this way long-term for a couple of reasons. One, on the inside wall, epoxying these things in is just fine because there's, eventually, there's going to eventually be a beam there that will sit exactly where those sit. So there's no big deal leaving those uh, threaded rod, that, that bolt sticking out of the wall. For the second story floor. For the second story floor. For the other side, the outside, there won't be a beam there. And so we were gonna have to cut off the threaded rod, sand it, drill it, fill, fill it, patch it, you know, kind of make it look nice, but you're always gonna see the holes where it was drilled. So we came up with a slightly different solution for the outer wall. We use five eighths on the inner. Um, we're also going to be upgrading the five eighths will probably be fine, but particularly in the garage, we're gonna put a lot of weight on the second story. So we're actually going to upgrade to uh, three quarter or one inch. Any structural engineers out there? Let me know what you think. Uh, three quarter or one inch threaded rod uh, drilled in, which will actually secure the beam every two feet, uh, which will hold the beam for the second story. And then what we'll do is actually put the floor joists on top of that. For the outside, because I didn't want to have to cut off the threaded rod, we went with this. So what this is, is a concrete anchor. So what you do is you drill a hole, you thread this in, you tap this all the way to the back of the hole, unthread, and then we have a punch that goes in and expands that out, similar to how a drywall anchor works. It expands out and secures this piece in. The nice thing about that is, when we're done and we go to pull the beam off the back wall, we can unscrew this and then there's just a hole left in the wall that we can fill and patch. Filling and patching is easier than trying to cut off an anchor flush. And so we went with that for the outer walls. The other issue we ran into was getting the form work to fit up against flush up against the existing wall without bowing out slightly. So right now there's about an eighth inch gap between the existing wall and the form as it comes up because we just can't push it in tight enough. We're so tall that our turnbuckles have to be so long that the wood is actually beginning to bend and warp and do funny things. So we came up with a way to kind of get it, but it doesn't really work. So essentially what we did is we, we nailed two boards together to give us our length, and then we nailed a board on top of it uh, crossways to kind of make a T section, which helps it not bow as much, but it's still bowing pretty significantly. And that's pushing up against the existing form 
to push it up against the, uh, or I'm sorry, it's pushing up against the form to push against the existing wall. So we also put strong backs like crazy every two feet because um, we don't have turnbuckles um, and we can't get them up that high. So we're gonna see if it's gonna work. I think we're gonna actually see quite a bit of push out, which is why, like I said, we're gonna do it differently moving forward. And we'll hopefully be able to show you that. <laughs> All right, so in the end, this is what it looks like. We'll essentially put a beam flat right, I mean, a, a end cap right here. It'll go up to about there. And then inside the form, that's what you see. That's actually gonna be a window that's above our door. That's what that beam is. And then we just drilled rebar in next to the existing rebar. You can see that and put in our chamfers. And we're only going to that blue line. I don't know if you can see that. We're only going to this line, not all the way to the top, because this line is exactly at eight and a, 18 and a half feet, which is what our plans call for. The other thing that's unique about this wall, you'll notice there's an L right here. It's because this is actually what the other there's going to be another wall that goes that direction, and this will be the foam that matches up to the inside of that wall. All right, Ricky's getting the air hose so we can do chamfers. Yep. And we're going to get foam and end cap and finish off rebar. Not in that order. Oh, these are eight foot chamfers. Perfect. Oh, you actually left an extra chamfer up here for that. Perhaps. I don't remember what I did. Can you give me the um, the saw? Yeah. Got it. Got it. Getting our turnbuckle ready while Ricky cuts and installs chamfers. Cool. So, because we decided to do this difficult, difficult, lemon difficult, we're going to put in a 2 by 4 right here to space in this channel. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put our turnbuckle right here and our T's gonna wedge in right there. We'll anchor into our form right through there. Sound good? Yep. All right. We can just get one end up for me, maybe. Oh yeah. Perfect. Okay. Uh, right there. I'll do my very best not to drop it on your head. Mojo appreciated. Cool. Cool. Should be. Concrete stakes. Yeah, one concrete stake in the bucket. The cart? The cart. Thank you. Yeah, but I'll keep a hand on it while you go get the hammer and the stake. It's probably good. You don't have to go. I mean, yeah. You can start ratcheting oh. it down. I'll tell you. Uh, actually, hold up. We're at a slight angle. There's a, uh, a rock yeah. piece of. Yeah, rock. And there's that little chunk of chamfer. Yeah, that. Throw it away.
boy. No! <laughs> the angle that it has to be at? Yeah. You have to cut it so weird. But I got it. Um, I think I'm actually ready for the uh, air compressor. Right. Yeah, I should only need it for a minute. Because cool. I cut everything, <laughs> pre-fit everything. This one can go in the trash. Because I cut it too short. We got an oops. That was an oops. All right. I already have air compressor. I mean, I already have the line over here. Oh, so you do. Uh, wake up, boss. All right, so we wrapped up forming and then uh, tomorrow we're gonna start ramming. Uh, so I think that's it for today. Uh, thanks for joining our adventure. <laughs> <laughs>